Hello folks, Professor Fiore back once again. This video is designed for people who are not familiar with the metric system. That basically means people who live in the USA and are not employed as scientists or engineers. Why do I say that? Well, there's a little over 7 billion people on the planet. There's about 330 million people in the USA. So that means the U.S. is a little over 4% of the global population. And really, 95, the other 95% use metric as the default norm. So in the USA, you would you know, go to the doctor and they would weigh you in pounds. They would get your height in feet and inches. You would pump up your car tires in pounds per square inch. Right? Those are the sort of U.S. customary units that we would typically use. Now, you go to other countries, that's not the case. Now, there might be exceptions. In other words, you could still go and play um, 18 holes of golf, and they would measure the distances in yards. You could still go to the pub and get a pint of ale. But you're not going to turn on the TV and get you know, tomorrow's forecast with a high in Fahrenheit degrees. That would be very odd, okay? Here in the U.S., that's what we see. So there's a, an interesting sort of question that comes up. Why? Why do, are we still using this non-metric system, right? What I refer to as U.S. customary units, and pretty much everybody else is using metric. What's the deal, right? Is it because metric is more accurate? The tools are better? Um, is it easier to use? Maybe it's people that have been fooled by a dastardly plot by communists who want to drain our precious bodily fluids. Well, okay, I, I think that last one is a little far-fetched, just a little bit. But, you know, Let's be honest, there are people who think the Earth is flat. Frisbee Earth! There are people who think uh, the Sun, the Earth, and all the entire universe are only 6,000 years old. There are people who think early humans took dinosaurs, put saddles on them, and rode them around like horses. Sort of a um, Lone Ranger, Fred Flintstone mashup. You know, Yabba Dabba hi -oh, Silver, right? Okay, lots of people believe crazy things. There's no evidence. Throw that away. Let's get back to the real stuff. So is metric inherently more accurate? Are the tools inherently better? Not really. I mean, accuracy is a function of, of your standards and, of course, the quality of your tools. Those things kind of go together. Um, so there's really no technical reason why that should be the case. Although, in all fairness, because 95% of the world does use metric, it might very well be that the tools, because there's a bigger marketplace for them, more people using them, they might be available at a certain quality at less expense. That may be true. I don't really know, but it's actually a minor thing. The real reason is metric is so much easier to use. Now, I know there's some people out there that are saying, what are you, crazy? There's all that kilo and milli and centi and what is all that business? It's too confusing to me. Why, there's 454 grams and a pound. That's crazy. Eh, go the other way, right? How many pounds, pounds and ounces, are there in a kilogram? You, you get a crazy number, right? That's not a, that's not a valid argument. You know, there are several problems with customary U.S. units. One is the fact that we have uh, multiple sort of subunits for the same thing, right? You want to talk about length. Well, if it's human size, we're talking feet. If it's smaller than that, we're talking inches. If it's big, you know, like between cities, we're talking miles. It's all length, though. But we have all these different units. The differences between the units, the factors, are also not nice numbers. They're goofy numbers. 12 inches in a foot. 5,280 feet in a mile. 
I mean, there's historical reasons for that, but I don't want to use that. That's crazy. Quick, how many inches are in two thirds of a mile? Right? That's not something you're going to do real quick. And we wind up with mixed units. Right? Like I said, you go to the doctor, they measure your height, feet, and inches. Oh, you're five foot 11. Oh, well, that's kind of weird, right? It's not like 5.93 feet, right? It's not, it's not like money, you know, in, in a U.S. currency. 100 cents, nice round number, 100 cents makes a dollar. So there's no question if you have 527 cents, there's no question that's $5.27, right? You just move the decimal point over two spots, boom, you're done, okay? Now, suppose you were building a deck, let's say, or something like that, and you've got a railing, you've got a span, and it's uh, 11 feet, 3 and 7 eighths inches, right? That's the span. And you have 40 spindles, and you want to put the 40 spindles in, and you want to divvy them up evenly. So now you have to take that measurement and divide it by 40. But you can't just type in, you know, 11 feet, 3 and 7 eighths inches, because it's a mixed unit. So you have to go through some machinations, you know, to actually get a proper result. Whereas if it was just, you know, in metric, something like, you know, I don't know, uh, 2.79 meters, you know, you could just divide it by 40 and you'd have an answer. And there would, be a, there would be a decimal portion of it, and off you would go, right? There would be no monkeying with this. You'd be, you wouldn't have to be mixing these things together. It's part inches, it's part feet, it's part this, it's part that. And by the way, there are other units that aren't maybe as commonly used, like rods and furlongs, but they, they are there, you know? Yards, we still use yards, it's only three feet, but, you know, some things we measure in yards. Go figure. Multiple names, same thing, okay? We look at uh, weights. So we have pounds. If it's a small piece of a pound, we have ounces. But it's 16 ounces in a pound. Huh? Why 16? Couldn't it, couldn't it have been 10? You know what I mean? Couldn't it be a nice factor? Just move the decimal point? Oh, but there's 2,000 pounds in a ton. Of course, there's several different kinds of tons, but, you know, we'll just ignore that for a moment. So we have all of this, you know, craziness. Same thing with liquid measures. You know, we have gallons and quarts, right? Four quarts to a gallon, two pints to a quart, two cups to a pint. Okay, um, tablespoons and teaspoons. I would always ask my classes this. How many teaspoons in a tablespoon? The vast majority of people never got this right. You know, unless you cook, you probably don't know that in U.S. customary, because by the way, there's also an imperial unit, imperial unit, which is similarly named, but not the same size. Let's add a little more confusion to this. Three teaspoons make a tablespoon. Okay, you got you got to divide up a, a recipe or something. It, it gets really cumbersome. You know how many tablespoons are in three quarters of a cup? And that's another thing we do. We keep cutting things in half, right? So you know you have a foot, you go down to an inch. You want to get smaller? Well, it's half an inch, quarter inch, eighth inch, sixteenth inch. So, you know, we wind up with these crazy measurements like, you know, five and 11 sixteenths inches. I don't want to deal with that. Just give me, you know, something point something something. It's just so much easier. You can just, even if you can't do the math in your head, you can just get your calculator and punch the stuff in there and you get an answer. You don't need a special calculator. And there are actually are special calculators where you can put in things like feet and inches and get, you know, an appropriate result after a mathematical operation. But that's just extra work, you know. And if anything, I think it turns people off of math. And it doesn't need to be that way. So in the metric system, we have one unit. You know, if you're talking about distance, it's meters. That's it. If you're talking about uh, mass, it's kilograms. Liters, if you're talking liquid. The only common unit we really have is time, which is seconds. You know, one second is one second. There's no such thing as a metric second. Second is a second is a second. Okay. Um, but if we want to make them big or we want to make them small, we just use multipliers. Right. So that's where all the kilo milli stuff comes in. You know, you might be familiar with this from computer technology. Right. Kilo is a factor of a thousand. Mega is a factor of a million. Right. Ten to the third, ten to the sixth. You go up from there. Giga. A lot of people pronounce that giga. 
that's 10 to the ninth. That's a billion, right? Terra is the next one up, another factor of a thousand, a million million, in other words. You go down, it's milli, which is one one thousandth. Millimeter is literally one one thousandth of a meter. So you could say something is 0.15 meters, or just move the decimal point three places. 0.15 meters is 150 millimeters. It's easy, right? You go down from there, micro is a millionth. So, you know, there's a thousand micrometers in a millimeter, and there's a thousand millimeters in a meter. Okay, or centi is one one hundredth, you know, cents, centi, cents. So you got a hundred centimeters in a meter. And that's all we have to do. So the same thing, you know, when you when you look at mass, you're talking about kilograms, you got grams. Okay, so a gram is one one thousandth of a kilogram. It's pretty small. Um, we go from there, right? Liters, milliliters. So how does this compare? Because, you know, people are always worried about conf uh, conversions. Well, the first thing I want to say about conversions is if the U.S. converted, like we said we were going to do when I was just a little children, we wouldn't be bothered with conversions right now. We're the last country. Once we convert, the only people that are going to convert, uh, be concerned about conversions are going to be historians or people that are dealing with, you know, legacy equipment. That's it. We change. Done. Everybody's metric. Why not? Okay, so in the meantime, how do, you, how do you maybe get used to using metric? Well, there are some very simple conversions, approximations, right? And they'll be good for, you know, just day-to-day -day kind of thing. Not super accurate, but close enough, right? Close enough. So you hear meters, think yards. A meter is about 10% bigger than a yard. But, you know, if you think about it, most of the stuff that you measure, like if I said, how far away is that tree out there in the field? You might say, oh, it's 100, 150 yards away. Okay. Uh, what is that? Well, you could say it's 100, 150 meters. I mean, the accuracy of your estimate, you know, the, the, the sort of fudge factor that you have on there is bigger than the difference between the size of a meter and the size of a yard. So, you know, you just think, okay, meters are just a little bit bigger than a yard. The same thing is true with liters and quarts. You know, a liter is just a little bit bigger, just a few percent bigger than a quart. So if you're talking liters, think quarts. Okay, just go back and forth with those. You go in the store and oddly, right, you buy soda in liter bottles. So I got a two liter bottle of soda. I got a three liter bottle of soda. But for some weird reason, milk, we still buy in quarts and half gallons and gallons. You know, there's some weird fixation we have with dairy products, apparently. I don't get it. But that's a simple sort of way to do it, okay? Um, when we talk mass, and mass is a little bit different than weight, but as long as you're staying here on Earth, you can just use a very simple equate. It's no big deal. Um, it's about a factor of 2.2 pounds to kilograms. So what you do is you, you take your pounds, you double it, add 10%, and you'll be there within a percentage point. Or go the other way, cut it in half, subtract 10%. So, you know, I could say, well, I, I weigh 65 kilograms, 65 kilos, right, shorthand. So double it, 130, add 10%, that's 13, 143 pounds. Bingo. You say, well, I weigh 180 pounds, what is that in kilos? Cut it in half, right, 180 cut in half is 90. Knock off about 10%, 9, so that leaves you at 81 kilos. Bingo. Done. Right? So those are your simple approximations that you can do to just get around this. But when we start working in, in uh, engineering, when we start working in, in science, it's going to be just so much easier to have these units. There's only one unit, right? You got meters, you got, you know, kilograms, you got seconds, those basic kinds of things. Off we go. We're not dealing with all this other stuff. Okay. Now there are secondary units, you know, for example, instead of pounds per square inch, we have pascals, right? No biggie. Instead of Fahrenheit degrees, you know, we have centigrade degrees. Some people call it Celsius degrees. Nice thing about that is zero is freezing water, 100 is boiling water. Right? It's kind of convenient in that regard. Now, if you're thinking, well, you know, this is all well and good, but it's going to cost me money to do a, a conversion, which is an argument that people made, you know, back in the 70s when there was talk about doing this. Um, 
the fact of the matter is not converting has already cost you money. So, you know, every fall and spring, I swap out the tires on my car, put the snows on, you know, put the summer tires on, off we go. And what do I do? I have to go out and get a 19 millimeter socket to take those off. So if you're like me, you know, you have one or more of these things kicking around your house, various sizes. Okay. And again, you probably have a whole set of sockets that are measured in millimeters and another whole set of sockets that are measured in inches. So, you know, 17 millimeters, 18 millimeters, 19 millimeters, but then you have 13 sixteenths of an inch. Okay. Seven eighths of an inch and so on and so forth. <sighs> hey, you know, if we had converted, I'd only have millimeters. All right. So yeah, you can continue using the U S customary units, but it's just bogging us down, right? It's like you could decide to design and manufacture a diesel powered impact wrench, right? You could do that. You could get it to work. It would be functional. It would do what you needed, but let's be honest. It would be bulky. It would be ugly. It would be cumbersome to use. So why do it? Why continue? Just change. And like I said, you wouldn't have to worry about conversions because everybody will be metric. Yay.